Hey, it's Jay, and here's my review of Rocket Man. Uh, Rocket Man is a biopic of legendary singer Elton John, a very popular singer in the 70s and 80s. So, let's get started. So the film opens up with Elton walking into rehab, uh, dressed in this flamboyant devil costume. And this is going to be kind of like the narration of Elton's life. It's going to constantly cut back from his life and you know, him in rehab. So, uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later. So the film opens up and it's a young Elton John, born Reginald Dwight, living with his mother, Shayla Eileen, played by Bryce Dallas Howard, and his grandmother, Ivy, uh, living in their home. And it's discovered that Elton has the ability to play melodies on a piano perfectly without ever having to hear it, I mean, uh, see it on like sheet music or have years of practice. He can just hear it on the radio or hear someone else play a very simplistic melody on the piano and just, you know, play it perfectly. No, you know, pauses, no anything. It's just there, natural. He wants to use this newfound ability to impress his father, who's never really home because he's off in the Air Force. Um, but when the day comes when he finally does come home and he's so excited to show his father that look what I can do I can play piano almost effortlessly even just by hearing it not by seeing it. it This doesn't impress him at all He's very very standoffish with his son and doesn't really care or show any love for him This causes turmoil between uh, his mother and his father uh, Well, I guess I should say Reginald's mother and father because he's not Elton John at this point um after he gets a little older, he is then uh, enlisted in a, an academy to learn music. And um, his skills are just, you know, baffling from other people at how insane he is. And he uh, develops more tastes in music, specifically Elvis Presley, and plays at clubs and bars and lounges and things to kind of boost his credibility as a pianist. Um, so finally, Elton or Reginald still, is fully grown and he's played by Taron Edgerton and he's just going out into the world and trying to find gigs to try to make himself a little bit more known. So an adult Elton joins a band called Bluesology and they are offered a gig to play backup for a soul band and you know Elton's kind of trying to take advice like how do I get to where you are right now and he pretty much gives him this advice. Change your name uh, write your own stuff and pretty much get rid of who you were. You need to change your identity if you're ever going to be found and discovered in the music industry. This causes Reginald Dwight to change his name to, well, Elton John. Uh, he then goes off on his own and is introduced to uh, Dick James, played by Stephen Graham, who is a very famous uh, record label. And he's managed by uh, Ray Williams, played by Charlie Rowe, and he's introduced to pretty much the most influential person in Elton John's life, Bernie Taupin, played by Jamie Bell. This is basically going to be his lyricist to, uh, you know, kind of up Elton John's credibility as a singer-songwriter. Uh, or I guess I should just say a singer-songwriter duo. And Bernie has amazing lyrics, and with Elton's insane ability to just write a melody without even having to hear anything. He just reads the words and just thinks of something. It's a perfect duo and as you will see for the rest of the movie, it doesn't go unnoticed. Um, so this friendship's uh, being developed and Elton's homosexuality is brought up and this is a big fear for Elton because he feels that like Bernie is not going to want to work with him if he knows that he's gay or he's going to be embarrassed that he's working with you know a gay man and uh it doesn't even phase bernie he's like no i have no problem with that at all i'm you know i'm ready to write for you and i'm ready to see where this takes us uh they then move into a flat together after moving out of a house that elton kind of Elton got into a relationship with a woman just to seek refuge into a house, uh, but that kind of got broken off, and she did not take the fact that he was gay very lightly. It was actually a very violent scene where her throwing out all their songs and all their music. Uh, I guess being lied to uh, like that kind of hurts, so <laughs> didn't go over very well. So they ended up moving back in with Elton's mother to continue writing songs and seeing if they can, you know, boost their credibility because. 
all the songs that they have written, nothing's really impressing. Uh, nothing's really impressing Dick. Nothing's impressing him at all. Everything he's like, this sounds like stuff I've heard thousands of times before. You guys need to really start working together and writing something that I like because you know you're this close to being you know taken off of my taken off your deal with me, and I'll find someone else who actually can write me music that's gonna make me money. So Elton and Bernie back at Elton's home. Uh, write your song and this is something that actually impresses uh, Mr. James and this gets them a concert performance at the Trebador in Los Angeles. Um, at first Elton's a little hesitant to go out there because I mean I think everybody is nervous their first performance you know especially in front of a foreign audience and so he's a little nervous but everyone digs his performance he does great and his popularity is shown after that performance. And at a party later that night, uh, he feels kind of betrayed when Bernie goes off and leaves Elton alone to go, you know, have some fun with a lady and just kind of abandons uh, Elton in his time of need. In the process, he runs into uh, John Reed, a uh, music manager played by Richard Madden, also known as and this influence he has on him really kind of starts to wear down on Elton pretty much from the get-go he starts to you know rock these overly flamboyant and massively extravagant outfits to venues and concerts and uh, yeah, the, the two have an affair, they have a relationship together, and you can tell that something's not right in this relationship on John's side, but I'll get into that in a little bit. So, after Elton kind of leaves Dick James to make John Reed his permanent manager, uh, John then tries to influence um, Elton into telling his parents that he is gay so that John and Elton's relationship can be, you know, better kept from the media. And so he goes back to his father's home and same thing, his father really doesn't care that his son has, you know, become this famous. And this is probably one of the most heartbreaking scenes in the entire movie. Uh, his father has remarried and had two children of his own. And while he showed Elton zero affection in his childhood, he shows these two boys all the love in the world, and you see just the pain and the just the betrayal in Elton's face as he's sitting in the car watching the man that he just wanted some form of reassurance from, of support from, you know, just giving it all to these two children and none was given to him. It's really, really impactful. I felt horrendous. For Elton John at that point it was and it's all props to Taron Edgerton he destroyed that scene it was so amazing how he portrayed you can literally see his heart just rip into two pieces um, with just how hurt he looked it was it was incredible and then he had to call his mother but he's so you know broken from that encounter with his father that he you know storms out and just you know, goes for it, tells his mom, but he's very angry about it because he's like, I'm about to break my mom's heart. This scene, like this entire exchange from his father to his mother is just horrifying. Because uh, then his mom's like, oh yeah, I knew you were gay all this time. Uh, I hope you're ready to live a life where you're never really loved. Uh, by that she meant, yeah, you could have a lover, but since you're gay, it's not really real love because, you know, back in those times, you know, gayness was still very, very not accepted. So she basically said, yeah, you can have lovers, and if, but it's never going to be proper. It's never going to be right. So I hope you're ready to live a life like that. And this just continues to add to the blows. And instead of seeking, you know, seeking comfort from John, instead of receiving it, John scolds him for 
almost canceling a performance because he was like, before he called his mom, he was like, cancel performance, make up an excuse for me. I can't go out on stage after breaking my mom's heart. He's like, don't you ever do that to me again. He punches him. And so instead of seeking comfort from the man that he loves, he just got scolded and chastised. So it was all just like one after another after another, just brutal beatings on poor Elton throughout that entire exchange. It was really rough to watch. So toppled with his parent issues and the abuse that Reed is putting upon him, this leads Elton to being obsessed with drugs, alcohol, shopping, and sex. And it's just all going downhill so quickly. He develops a very short temper and he continues to experiment and mix, you know, prescription pills and, or non-prescription drugs with alcohol and it's just spiraling out of control. He catches John Reed uh, cheating on him out in the pool and breaks off his relationship with him and John just coldly replies, I don't care as long as you keep making me money. All of this is just going up to a boiling point and he mixes more prescription pills with alcohol and goes to his pool and tries to commit suicide by drowning himself. He is rescued by all the guests because a huge party was thrown at his uh, estate and he was brought to the hospital. John, being the you know cold bastard that he is, was just like, y you're fine. So he gets sent to Dodger Stadium to perform right after going to the hospital, almost overdosing on this stuff. So it just goes to show you how much John really cares about Elton John. So while in the studio, he sings a duet with a woman, and he thinks that this is his one chance to maybe try to avoid some negative press, because I feel like at this point, it's known that Elton John is gay. So he marries a woman tr to try to, you know, take himself out of the limelight, to try to, you know, get some negative press off of him. It doesn't really work, though, when it's blatantly obvious that he's gay and so that relationship lasts maybe five seconds so with that not working he once again drinks takes prescription pill pills and just has a heart attack actually has a heart attack and is rushed to the hospital yet again and john reed being you know the completely loving understanding man literally says it's just a chest infection he's fine even though he knows it was a heart attack. The, you know, the medical expert's like, no, dude, it was a heart attack. And he was like, nah, 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 it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And Elton is then forced to go to Madison Square Garden to perform his next concert. But before he goes out on stage, he gets up and leaves because he finally understands, I am not okay. I need help. What can I do? This leads us to the beginning of the movie when he bursts into the uh, Alcoholic Anonymous meeting and pretty much brings us full circle. And in a really great moment, he kind of has metaphysical conversations with all the people who he's either hurt or have hurt him in the past, uh, you know, with his bad relationship with his parents after all, you know, the blow up about being gay and all that. And, you know, he ditched Bernie. He, you know, exiled Bernie, I should say, you know, John being, you know, the awful person he is. And uh, frequent conversations with young, you know, baby Reginald Dwight, who never wanted this, you know what I mean? Like, it's even said that. It's like, I, ne I never wanted all this. This is what I wanted to be. I wanted to be with music, yeah, but I didn't want it to go to this extreme. And this is finally enough for him to, you know, burst out and just be like, I need to start fresh. I need to start anew and do music the way I want to do it, not the way my manager wants me to do it. He reconnects with Bernie, and Bernie writes him a song, uh, and, you know, Elton is very hesitant to go back into the limelight, into, you know, the spotlight again, because he thinks that he was influenced by the drugs and the alcohol. That's what made him perform better. That's what made him Elton John. And Bernie's like, no shot. You're one of the most talented people I know. It's all in your head. And so he finally gets back into the groove with I'm Still Standing. And yeah, it's it ends with a, a really great recreation of the I'm Still Standing music video. And then in a little epilogue before the credits, it's revealed that Elton's been sober for 28 years. He has a new husband, uh, David Furnish, and they have two beautiful boys. And he still keeps in touch with Bernie and they're still the best of friends. And that's Rocket Man for you. 
Um, so let's go over everything about it. And I'm also going to add a little segment at the end uh, where I compare and contrast it to another biopic that came out, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. So this film is so solid. I love how... I love how Alcoholics Anonymous wasn't just the last scene, it was the first scene. And this was all flashback to, you know, his life and how he got to where he was at that exact moment. It's really great. And it keeps cutting back. And what's really, what's genius, and I don't think what a lot of people would notice uh, if they don't really dive into details and look for small hidden details, each time we cut back to... Uh, you know, rehab, we're seeing Elton devolve back into Reginald Dwight. He First he takes off the horns, then the hood comes off, then he's naked in a robe, no devil attire whatsoever, and then he's wearing normal clothes like you or me. So it's, it's super genius how he's breaking out of this Elton John personality and getting back to being Reginald Dwight. I don't think a lot of people noticed that, but I did. Every time I cut back to him at rehab, I'm like, that's brilliant. And back to the metaphysical stuff where he's talking to, you know, his parents or Bernie or John Reed or Dick James at one point, I think. Um, he, this goes on throughout the whole movie. And every time he's in a very big situation, like when he tries to commit suicide in the pool, he sees Reginald Dwight, the baby Reginald Dwight, looking up at him with just like the look of, what are you doing? Is this really what you wanted to be back when we learned to play the piano without even needing practice? Is this what you really wanted? And it's just so smart how he has scenes like that that just, you know, show him slowly understanding that I am making so many mistakes by continuously doing this to myself, by continuously being influenced by people who don't give a damn about me. I had such a great support system and now it's all gone because of my own selfish needs. It's, it's just brilliant writing. Not to mention, uh, the musical numbers are very solid, too. I mean, there's a fantastic soundtrack with, you know, just some standouts, The Bitch's Back, Tiny Dancer, Don't Go Breaking My Heart with Kiki Dean, uh, Honky Cat, Pinball Wizard, Rocket Man, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, and I'm Still Standing. So many great songs from Elton John's library, with many, many more that I didn't really feel the need to list because I'd still be here talking about it. Um... So if you're an Elton John fan, this has got music galore that you'll love and you'll just, you know, want to go back and see. It's it's entertaining to see. And Taron Edgerton, just wow. Wow, wow, wow. Unbelievable performance by that man. It's amazing that he sung all, you know, he sang all the songs by himself. Uh, it's just, it's great how he captured just, you know, Elton John's flamboyantness, his extravagance, and everything about it. It's just, it was such a solid performance that I cannot do it justice with how amazing it was. And Bryce Dallas Howard, though it was a little distracting, at some point she looked younger than Elton John, even though she's supposed to be his mother. Um, Bryce Dallas Howard, I mean, she did great. She captured, she really captured that, like, you know, you know, just, I don't really know how to describe her. So cold is probably the best word. She really captures that coldness that she, you know, feels just towards life in general. Uh, you know, she feels like her life has been messed up so badly by the non-support of her husband that she feels like, you know, having Elton was just kind of a waste of time. And it was just so perfectly, you know, broadcasted here. And the relationship between Bernie and Elton was so well put together. Taryn and Jamie did a great job at making it seem like these two have been best friends for years and years and years. They just made it work so well. And, uh, hey, Richard Madden, you don't have a bad voice at all, my dude. Uh, I checked the, you know, I checked the cast list to make sure that it wasn't like another singer, but no, Richard Madden actually sang a couple, sang a song. And, uh, he did great. He really captured that slime ball, you know, you know, uh, manager type personality that we've seen in a lot of these, uh, movies. And it's just, it was really, really good. Really, really solid. And, you know, they just made the scene seem so natural. And it's just, it's great to see that, that, you know, these actors are willing to just, you know, let loose and just be characters that they would never be in real life. It's just, it's great. Solid, solid acting. 
So, in a question of which film was better, Bohemian Rhapsody or Rocket Man, that's tough. That's a really, really tough call because both were so solid in their own right. Uh, they have very similar plots too. Uh, you know, Superstar struggling with his sexuality is manipulated by people to push away the ones they love. They reconnect, have a big comeback at the end, except, you know, Ellen John doesn't get AIDS and die. Um, that was horrible. Wow. Um, but if I had to pick one, I'd have to lean a little bit towards Bohemian Rhapsody just for the simple fact that I know a little bit more Queen songs than Elton John songs. Um, but if you asked me who performed better, Rami Malek as Freddie Mercury or Taron Edgerton as Elton John, I can't answer that. I really, I really cannot answer that. They both did so well in those performances that it's pretty impossible to pick who did better or who did worse or anything like that. So I'm not really going to try to entertain that. But just personally, Bohemian Rhapsody gets the edge, but like it's th this much of an edge. It's not like a big gap. It's literally like this much. I would be fine watching both for the rest of my life. And that's why this film receives a four out of five stars, which is a great movie. Fantastic should be seen by everybody, especially if you're a huge fan of Elton John or even just 70s and 80s music as a whole because it really captures the era. It captures the time period perfectly. So, yeah, that's my review of Rocket Man. Stay tuned next week for number eight of my top 10 favorite movies of all time. I wanted to kind of get this out of the way so it wasn't like 10 weeks later I'm reviewing a movie that's been out in the theaters or at that point it'll probably be out on Blu-ray. So I'm trying to get these newer movies out of the way. But next week is number eight. So yeah, with that said, make sure you guys like, subscribe, ring that bell icon so you get notified of when I upload next. And as always guys, that's a wrap.